Good evening, everybody, and welcome in here on the Buckeye Racing Network. I'm Tyler Bentley. Alongside me in the booth, as always, is Mr. Tim Henderson. Tim, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. We're in for another big night of racing here with the Short Track Rivals Racing Open Setup Pro Late Model Dirt Division. They're taking on Lima Land Motorsports Park. Practice session is just getting wrapped up here. About 30 seconds left. At the top of the board is going to be Mr. Brandon Barnhart. Turned a 12-18 early on in the practice. The track has kind of went away now. So lap times have fallen off quite a bit from that time. But Brandon Barnhart, Blake Steele, Ryder English, David Cannon, Cody Nevin. Your top five. And you can see the top... Lap times of the top 10, all fairly close, spanning from a 12.18 to a 12.30. If you're tuning in alongside us here on the Buckeye Racing Network, please let us know who you're pulling for out there in the chat. If you're tuning in maybe for the first time, we want to welcome you in here. Should have a fantastic night of racing coming up. Qualifying session just getting underway. Got five minutes on the board. Cars are going to start heading out to take their laps. Hunter McManus entering the racetrack. Going to get a couple laps to try around. Oh, maybe going to have to retry there. Let's check on another driver. Jordan Dye here in the 83 machine. Chrome gold numbers on that car. Pretty spiffy looking. Let's we'll see what sort of lap times he can lay down. See a couple cars already crossing their first lap. Jordan Dye goes third quick at a 12.80. David Cannon just went across the line at a 12.57. Now Brandon Barnard at a 12.55. Jordan Dye lap number two is a little slower at a 12.86. Let's check on Blade Wisdom. He's just getting his qualifying underway. Coming across here for lap number one. Blade went third quick lap number one at a 12.52, and he's going to call it quits right there. Cody McDonald's on the racetrack. 
Let's see what sort of times he can put up here. Lap number one complete for Cody. He goes 26 quick at a 13.32. Run in the bottom. Let's see if he picks up here on lap number two. I expect he will. And he does at a 12.70. Good for 21st quick. Travis McDonald just starting his qualifying time. He's got some shiny stuff on the side of his car. You can see it glistening off of the sun. Chrome green. He comes across the line to complete lap two. Lap two was a pickup to a 1281, 27th quick. Juan Martinez just crossing the line to start lap number one. Lap one goes on the board for Juan. Must have had an issue there of an incident. You gotta be careful because it will negate your lap time. Hopefully he gets his second lap in across the line. And he does, up to 11th quick out of 12, 5, 9 for Juan Martinez. Michael Stenroos just completed his qualifying run. His best time was a 12.49, and good for fourth quick for him. 34 cars have taken a time. Let's see, Blake Bailey's entering the racetrack. Got about a uh, minute 45 seconds, so plenty of time to get his two laps in. Bunker Hill, Illinois native, Mr. Blake Bailey. Oh my goodness, he turned that car up into the outside wall, so maybe he, he did want to take a qualifying run there, Tim. <laughs> Must be, because it, it looks like he is going to reset the car here. So just a little over a minute left. Absolutely, if there's only a minute left, you want to maybe try to get one lap in. But he's just creeping around the track right now. No other cars are trying their hand at a qualifying run. So we'll just keep an eye with Blake. That was his lap one. He's got to make a count here for lap two. All the way down to the bottom. Let the car drift up. And no, I, I'm not really sure. <laughs> so Blake decided to negate his qualifying run there. Very interesting. That would complete his second of two laps, so he would qualify at really 35th. As Cody Nevin at a 12.44. Poplar, Wisconsin native, is going to set the quick time here tonight. Blake Bailey did get one lap in, and credited with a 12.73, good for 24th quick. But Cody Nevin, your quick time here tonight at Lima Land. Let's take a look at the grid here for heat number one. Row number one is going to be your quick time, Cody Nevin in the 011 and David Cannon. Row two is going to be Jacob Folds and Ryder English. Row three is going to be Landon Curran and Dawson Tone. Row four is going to be Landon Norton and Dana Burdick. Row five is going to be Logan Brown and Alex Thompson. Alex Thompson so far not m making the call. In fact, I believe Alex Thompson is race control, so he would not be part of the racing action here tonight. He's just watching from the control booth over everything that goes on on the racetrack. So nine cars are going to start, and we are going to take three, correct him? Awesome. Good deal. If you're watching here on the Buckeye Racing Network, and if your favorite driver happens to be in heat number one, let us know who they are. 
Let us know who you're pulling for. Out of turn four, the green flag goes in the air. Cody Nevin's going to lead us down into turn number one. David Cannon, Jacob folds Ryder English three wide out of turn two. They sort of settle it into three. The 22 car, Landon Norton, was trying to make a move on the inside. He's going to slot back into seventh. Our top four or five is really single file. Landon Curran's trying to run up a little higher than everybody else through three and four. Remember that bubble spot is third, so Ryder English holds on to it now. He's got Landon Curran, Jacob Folds, and Dawson Tone right there behind him. I do see early on a lot of these drivers are running the lower part of the racetrack. As I say, that our race leader goes high in one and two to run the cushions. So. Landon Curran has got to the back bumper of Ryder English. Three laps to go. Well, Ryder's trying to gap just a little bit. First and second. Trying to pull away from third. They are doing so just a little bit. White flag goes in the air for race leader Cody Nevin. He's going to clip the bottom and drift the car up on exit across the line. Cody Nevin wins heat one, David Cannon second, and Ryder English third. Your final transfer, Landon Kern and Jacob Folds, going to round out your top five here in heat number one. Austin String says, send some snacks to the race tower. How about send some snacks to the broadcast booth? We, we like snacks, don't we, Tim? That's what I'm saying. Heat number two is taking the grid behind the pace truck. Row number one looks like this. Brandon Barnhart and Ethan Bowers. Row two is going to be Juan Martinez and Ashton Farr. Row three is going to be Blake Steele and Jordan Tucker. Row four is going to be Lane Scruggs and Travis McDonald. Row five is going to be Brett Waslowski and Chris Martin. And the field starts pacing. Chris Martin looks like he's not going to make the call, so we're going to have nine cars to start heat two. Going to take three directly to the feature. Appreciate that, Austin. Tim, he says if he gets some, he will share. That sounds like a plan. Brianna, thanks for letting us know. I, we have adjusted on Tim's mic time and time again, and I just don't think we've got the settings quite dialed in. Green flag goes in the air. Brandon Barnhart, Ethan Bowers leads us down into turn one and two. Ashton Farr's in third. Juan Martinez, Blake Steele side by side battling for fourth. Yes, it was. And they're side by side. And the battle's fierce right now for that. Well, I guess they're battling for third and second there. That's Barnhart and Farr. But don't look now. Here comes Juan Martinez. He's looking for that third spot. He's got that car rolling around the outside. And he's he was there for a second made some contact with the wall, but I don't know, but he did, and he's got Blake Steele on the inside. Now three laps already to go. Steele's going to slide up in front of him out of turn two. Martinez looking to cross over. A little bit of contact. Already two laps to go. That was, this here is the battle for third and fourth. Our race leader is Ethan Bowers. 
he works away his way around the outside of turns three and four to the white flag this time. It looks like no challenge from Iowa. As I say that, Barnhart's going to send it down low. Not going to be enough. Bowers is going to win. Heat one. Barnhart's going to be second. Ashton Farr is going to finish third. Juan Martinez and Blake Steele fourth and fifth. So add three more drivers directly into the feature. As we move right on along into our third heat of the night. Nate Walker and Blade Wisdom is going to be on row number one. Row two is going to be Hunter McManus and Jaden Rager. Row number three is going to be Matt Taylor and Cody McDonald. Row four is going to be Zachary Rogers and Danny Accord. And our ninth starter is going to be Eric Hudson. Nine cars going to start this third heat. Did you say, Tim, we were going to have four heats or three? So we're going to have this one and another. All right. So again, three more drivers here. Tim, you feeling like bringing us to the green here? All righty. Take it away. Just about three wide for P5. That is Cody McDonald, Matt Taylor, and Zachary Rogers. White flag as going in the air. Yep, as we said, it is Hunter Mc... Or, no, that's not right. Why is my scoring like that? It is Nate Walker taking the win, followed by Blade Wisdom, Hunter McManus. That's our three transfers. I, and I am sorry, folks, I didn't realize that you could not completely hear Tim. I, didn't, I thought his volume just might have been low, but Tim, for some reason on my software, your voice wasn't being heard, period, until just about 15 seconds ago. <laughs> oh, uh, well, that that's unfortunate. Yes, it is. So, again, I'm sorry, folks at home. Tim had been talking the whole time. Unfortunately, you just weren't able to hear him until right now. So, a little bit of technical difficulties as we roll into our fourth heat race here. Real quick, we might be able to get the grid run through here. Michael Sten, Roos, Caleb York on row one. Row two is going to be Jeremy Akins and Clayton Cluel. Row number three is going to be Cameron Tucker and Blake Bailey. Row four is going to be Jordan Dye and David Moore. And row five is going to have one car that's going to be Jason McManus. A little bit of a Fox moment right there. Oh, wait, I can't say that. <laughs> yeah, again, I am, I am not sure what was going on there, but... Let me know now if you can hear Tim. He should be coming through loud and clear. 
Tim was calling an awesome third heat, and he, you guys at home weren't able to hear that. So I think we're going to give him one more shot here <laughs> to let him call this fourth heat now that you're able to hear him. Go ahead, take it away, Tim. Michael Steinruz slowly paces the field over Caleb York, Jeremy Atkins, and the rest. He gets away. Caleb York all over him already. What a great launch from the second spot. Looking to take over the lead. Little contact between the two. As we're still side by side. I believe we have a yellow not sure what happened I don't see anyone around I think it happened oh, around Blake Bay one in the, yep I see one in the pits now yeah Blake Bailey got in the outside wall and then got hit from behind and he just came to a stop at the exit of turn number two and I had to tow back to the pit lane. That must have been enough to bring out the yellow flag. So, First caution of the entire evening so far here at Lima Land. Brought out by the number 11 machine. And Jason McManus did not make the call. Here to start this uh, fourth and final heat. Field's going to be two by two. Pace truck peels off. Field's in control of Michael Stender as he steps on the gas. Green flag goes back in the air for the first restart. Uh-oh, one's around and sideways at the back there. That's David Moore stopped on the racetrack. I believe we're going to stay green. He toes it to the pit lane. Three-way battle for second. Caleb York, Clayton Cluel, and Cameron Tucker there through turn three and four. I think Clayton just picked up two spots, just running the, the bottom right there. Off the restart. Yeah, I think you're right. He's going to move right into that third and final transfer spot. He may not have to worry about going to a consolation race. He's got Cameron Tucker right behind him now. White flag goes in the air for our race leader, Michael Sinders. Tucker's going to drive the car down on the inside and try to slide up. He is ahead of him out of two. Through turns three and four. Let's see what Lights happens. Crossover. Cross oh, contact. contact. To the line. Wow. Cameron Tucker squeezes out the transfer spot over Clayton Cluel. Caleb York came home second. Michael Stenroos won the fourth heat. Wow. What a finish we had right there to end heat number four. All right. Well, this is presuming maybe the D main, Tim. That is correct. This is the D main. 12 laps, top six go to the C main. All right. Row number one is going to be Eric Hudson and Blake Bailey. Row two is going to be Dana Burdick and Brett Waslowski. Row three is going to be Danny Accord and Jason McManus. Row four is going to be Alex Thompson and Chris Martin. That's the starting lineup of the D main, and they're taking six cars. I believe we're only going to have five starters because J.C. McManus and Chris Martin haven't ran tonight, and Alex Thompson is race control. So everybody in this D main should transfer to the back of the C main. Twelve laps the distance for these fellas. Oh, one car's blinking out. I believe that's the triple seven of Eric Hudson, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Green flag goes in the air, and we start the D main. Eric Hudson's going to lead us down into turn one. Three wide battling for second. Wow. Big damage between Brett Waslowski and Blake Bailey into turn number one, and that's going to bring the yellow flag out. My goodness. 
on the f initial start. So let's keep an eye on Brett Weslowski in that number three machine. Blake Bailey just didn't get the best start. Weslowski got a really good start. Both cars ended up in the outside wall from the contact and heavy, heavy damage to both of those race cars, unfortunately. Eric Hudson, Dana Burdick, Brett Weslowski. He was missing the right front wheel altogether now. It came off of that race car completely. Danny Accord. Man. Go ahead, Tim. It just the launch that Brett got in the position that he did, if he could have just got it to, to slide a little bit more in a favor, favorable way, he could have made it all the way up to, to second. Green flag goes back in the air for the restart. Eric Hudson, Dana Burdick was first one and two. Yellow flag goes in the air instantly. I'm not sure if that was an... an I think that was just a, a bad timing. I don't think anybody was lined up. Oh, okay. So admins might have gone ahead and thrown the yellow flag out because maybe a bit of confusion there before that restart. So we're going to get to rack them up and try once more. Looks like... Uh, I don't. It's Are we like, back green right now? I'm showing we're back under green after the yellow, so I'm really unsure as to what's going on. I'm showing Dana Burdick, though, scored first with Eric Hudson, second, and Blake Bailey at the tail of the lead lap, and third, Danny Accord, Brett Waslowski, fourth and fifth. So really kind of unsure as to what what happened here but four laps remain in this D main a little bizarre don't you think Tim <laughs> uh, I'm not even sure what's happening I'm not either but <laughs> Dana Burdick's out front Eric Hudson's behind him in second kind of reeling him in Blake Bailey's third on the tail end of the lead lap and fourth and fifth are currently running just a lap behind Ready now, two laps to go. White flag goes in the air this time. Burdick and Hudson. Hudson, 20 clear in second. Out of turn number four, checkered flag goes in the air. Dana Burdick wins the D-Main. Eric Hudson's going to come home second. Blake Bailey's working out of the bottom of two. And out of four, across the line, going to finish third. Danny Accord's going to come home fourth. Brett Waslowski fifth. And Jason McManus is going to get credited with six to transfer, but he is not here tonight. And the grid for the C-Main. Jeremy Akins and Landon Norton's going to be row number one. Row two is going to be Lane Scruggs and Matt Taylor. Row three is going to be David Moore and Logan Brown. Row four is going to be Travis McDonald and Dana Burdick. Row five, Eric Hudson and Blake Bailey. Row six is going to be Danny Accord. Solo, because Brett was, or excuse me, no, Brett Waslowski is going to be there with him. And then our 13th starter who's not here is Jason McManus. We will also be taking six from this feature to move on to the B main. All right, six from this one, 15 laps the distance. Right now, the around the uh, hot seat's going to be David Moore, Dana Burdick, Travis McDonald. Those drivers are all right there around that sixth place position. Logan Brown did not make the call as well, so two cars did not start so we're going to have 11 here in this C main out of turn four green flag goes in the air Jeremy Akins is going to lead him into turn number one 
Lane Scruggs, one car in the outside wall. That's Dana Burdick. He's fallen way back to 11th and a little bit off the pace, but everybody's still continuing, continuing to go straight. Landon Norton looking on the bottom side of the racetrack. Underneath our first and second. He might clear them both here out of turn four, almost running the bottom. Let's see what he can do out of turn two here. He's to the race lead. He's probably going to slide up. He does out of turn four. They thought about the crossover, but settles back in line. Matt Taylor, David Moore, fourth and fifth. Blake Bailey is now in sixth, and he's pretty, plenty clear of Brett Wislowski as of right now. Mark Scruggs down to the bottom. He says, I'll follow you, Landon Norton, and takes away P2. Yeah, Norton is setting sail. Scruggs is following him through. Matt Taylor, Jeremy Akins, Blake Bailey, all three cars throw them under a blanket. Now as they're three wide out of turn number four. They settle out for the moment being. Eric Hudson's trying to run down David Moore. He's within striking distance here. We'll keep an eye on that battle. Accord had a little bit of contact with the, the wall. He has brought it down to pit road. Looks like the same for Dana Burdick as well. Both cars came down the pit road. Oh, David Moore, he's in the outside wall. Hudson's underneath him out of turn two. This is the battle for the transfer to go to the B. They're side by side. Back up front, it's still all Landon Norton. He's opened up a 1.3 second advantage over Lane oh. Scruggs. David Moore got into the wall just a little bit again, but Eric Hudson down to the inside. Oh, Hudson's going to complete the pass. Move Eric Hudson into six. Moore goes back to seven. Already three laps to go. Our top five are all single file. Oh, David Moore is up into the wall. He loses the right front tire, has to tow. Unfortunate for David. Eric Hudson, two seconds clear of... Travis McDonald, white flag goes in the air for Landon Norton. So he's working down the back straightaway, battle on just behind for a second. Lane Scruggs, Blake Bailey. Landon Norton's going to come across the line and win your C main. Second place is going to go to Blake Bailey. He squeaks it out over Lane Scruggs. Matt Taylor, fourth. Jeremy Aikens, fifth. And your final transfer car, Eric Hudson, is going to move on to the back of the B main. Everybody else, unfortunately, is going to be Putting the car on the hauler tonight. Our B main starters. Row number one is going to be Landon Curran and Juan Martinez. Row two is going to be Jaden Rager and Clayton Cluel. Row three is going to be Jacob Folds and Blake Steele. Row four is going to be Cody McDonald and Jordan Dye. Row five is going to be Dawson Tone and Jordan Tucker. Row six is going to be Zachary Rogers and Landon Norton. Row seven is going to be Blake Bailey and Lane Scruggs. Row eight is going to be Matt Taylor and Jeremy Akins. And Eric Hudson is going to be the only car of row nine. All right, 18 laps of distance here in the B main, and we are going to transfer how many, Tim? We are taking 12 into the feature. All right, we already had 12 transfer from the heats and we're gonna add another 12 here from the B main. We will have a 24 car feature here tonight from Lima Land Motorsports Park. Page truck peels off. Green flag goes in the air. We're underway. 
in the B main. Almost three wide there. It is four wide just behind him. Cody McDonald was part of that. Clayton Cluel, Blake Steele, part of that wow. action. Because they're going to try three wide for a second again here out of turn. Number two, very, very tight. But they make it through. Clayton Cluel trying to slide up in front of Juan Martinez and doesn't have enough momentum. Jaden Rager, Cody McDonald oh. on the inside. Oh, we got a car around towards the back there. It was Dawson Tone. He gathered it back in, but that was enough to, to bring the yellow flag out. We'll go back and show you guys what happened to Dawson. Looks like he hit the one of the tires on the inside of Learn 1 and 2. You see the 18 machine just had a head of steam, hit Dawson in the left rear, got Dawson's car perpendicular to the racetrack. Blake Bailey's car was really sideways as well, but everybody managed to continue going, but it was just enough for the admins to go ahead and throw that yellow. We're going to be two by two once again. Tim, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, you know, Landon Curran had an amazing launch. Let's see if he can replicate it again here. Green flag just, back in the air. Just about, not quite the distance that he had on uh, Juan Martinez before. We got major contact in the back. Yeah, I believe that they was... Got yeah, Rager was really out of shape out of turn four. He gathers it back in. Remember, we're taking 12. Jordan Tucker currently is on the hot seat right now. Yikes. Matt Taylor as well. Three wide just ahead of him. Blake Bailey, Jordan Tucker. Jordan Dye. All side by side. Cody McDonald making some headway on the bottom up front. He's now up into second place from his seventh place starting position. Lane Scruggs is up eight positions. He's running in sixth. He's making some headway here. Lannon Curran working the cushion as we come across for seven laps to go. In the B main, Cody McDonald, Juan Martinez is side by side. Blake Steele has caught up to them. Maybe he's trying to make it three wide here for second. Clayton Cluel's running fifth. Jaden Rager and Lane Scruggs side by side for sixth. Landon Norton, seventh. Blake Bailey, eighth. Jordan Dye, ninth. Jordan Tucker, or Jordan Dye, tenth. Jordan Tucker, eleventh. And Matt Taylor, in 12th. We have got a battle brewing for our race lead. Martinez has caught Curran as well. Uh, Blake Steele is right there. Cody McDonald. Our top four are all together here. Three laps to go. Almost three wide. Blake Steele's working hard down low, trying to squeeze his way up in between Curran and Martinez. He's going to lose some momentum. And now Cody McDonald's underneath him for third. White flag goes in the air for Landon Curran. Martinez is all the way down to the bottom. He's going to let that car slide up. Not enough momentum there. Curran's going to be on the defensive line. One's in the outside wall. To the line, Landon Curran wins the B main. Juan Martinez second, Blake Steele third, Cody McDonald fourth, Clayton Cluel fifth, Jaden Rager sixth, Landon Norton seventh, Lane Scruggs eighth, Blake Bailey ninth, Jordan Dye tenth, Matt Taylor eleventh, and Zachary Rogers is going to be credited with twelfth. Those cars are going to tag the back of the A main for our feature event. All right. 
We've got a quick five minute warm up as always here with STRR. These drivers that get to partake in the feature event are going to get to run some laps and warm up some around this racetrack. You'll see some of the uh, quick lap times populate on the left-hand side of the screen. I think we're, we've got a good one in the books coming up here, Tim. What do you think? No, Tim may have stepped away. I know he was a bit under the weather coming into tonight. He had a cold going on as well, so he might have had to step away for a moment. Michael Stenroos just went to the top of the board with a 13-18. I apologize. I was uh, taking a drink. Oh, you're all right. I was just letting everybody uh, know you told me you were, you've been a bit under the weather today, so. Yeah, it's what we get in New York. You know, typical. But uh, <laughs> to answer your question, I, you know, if it was anything like the last couple, like the last two mains, and like the last two heats, I, you know, I think this, it, it's going to be insane. Uh, the track hasn't uh, slicked off quite as much as I thought it would have already, but. Oh, my, uh, big trouble there. You know, even not, even if it didn't slick off, it is still providing a fantastic uh, race. Yeah, I know. I think you either really enjoy Lima Land or, uh, as a racer here on the sim, or I've heard of a lot of people that don't enjoy this racetrack. But, man, what we have seen here in the past couple of weeks with STRR weather it be in the 358 division or these pro late models that has provided some really awesome racing for us here on BRN. Ethan Bauer showing some speed here in the warm up. He just ran not too long ago a 1307. Some speed coming out of that race car. Here's Blade Wisdom working his way around the outside. Also the 96 machine, and that's Ryder English. I haven't talked too much about him tonight. We can see that cushion is getting slippery, though. Some drivers are starting to hit the wall some, trying to run up high there. So I'll have to keep an eye on that once we get the feature underway. Well, Bentley, as uh, we get to that time, uh, I'm going to ask you, ask you this. We do this every week. We pick a driver. Who are you gonna pick tonight? Um, you know it's so tough because we've seen you know it's possible for drivers to come, you know, from a little ways behind to the lead. It's also we've seen drivers be able to hold on to the race lead for the entire feature event, but. Man, uh, you know what? Let's get uh, let's look at some of the uh, so the starting lineup of the feature here in just a moment, and we'll go from there. How does that sound? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fair. <laughs> it is so tough to pick and choose. You know, as broadcasters and commentators, we gotta be the middleman. We can't really have favorites. 
But each and every week, we like to do this thing of, of drivers. We like to keep an eye on for the duration of the feature, who we think has a really good chance to win. And here is the starting lineup for our feature race. Cody Nevin and Ethan Bowers, row number one. Row two is going to be Nate Walker and Michael Stenroos. Row three is going to be David Cannon and Brandon Barnhart. Row number four is going to be Blade Wisdom and Caleb York. Row five is going to be Ryder English and Ashton Farr. Row number six is going to be Hunter McManus and Cameron Tucker. Row number seven is going to be Landon Curran and Juan Martinez. Row eight is going to be Blake Steele and Cody McDonald. Row 9 is going to be Clayton Cluel and Jaden Rager. Row 10 is going to be Landon Norton and Lane Scruggs. Row 11 is going to be Blake Bailey and Jordan Dye. Row 12 is going to be Matt Taylor and Zachary Rogers. That's your 24-car field here tonight. For 30 laps. Wow, this is tough to pick and choose. Well, who's it going to be? Oh, man. If I had to pick, I think I'm going to be looking just a, a couple rows back. Not quite on the front row. I think I'm going to look at Blade Wisdom. And that uh, it shows 36 on our time and in scoring, but it's showing 22 on the racetrack. He's, looks like he's going to be starting on the inside of the fourth row. Well, there you go. I'll 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 be keeping my eye on Nate Walker in the 56 machine. All right. He's starting on the inside of the second row. Well, 30 laps is a long time here at Lima Land. 24 cars going to get to do battle. Now to turn four, we get to rock and roll for 30 laps at Lima Land Motorsports Park. Cody Nevin brings us in to turn one and two, and he has got Ethan Bowers right behind him. Caution flag is in the air, and early yellow here tonight. Not sure the cause, maybe a bad start because I didn't see anything happen on the racetrack. Maybe get some confirmation if we can possibly from race control because I'm not sure. Did you, did you see anything that I could have missed, Tim? I don't see any cars on pit lane. No, I didn't see anything out of the usual. Like it could have been just a uh, a not so good start. That's what uh, I'm beginning to think as well. But but I did, uh, however, get to see uh, as they took off into one, David Cannon on his, the back of his, like, spoiler, uh, says, what's up, brother? Oh, man. If that's not, <laughs> if that's not spreading around the world, that phrase right now, it's everywhere. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of surprised it's not been all over some of these dirt cars, you know. I was, it'd be kind of interesting to see one that's got, that phrase all over it well david cannon has it on the back of his uh spoiler so all right yeah i do see that so two by two by two the field is pace truck peels off cody nevin is under control he stands on the gas green flag goes back in the air for the first restart of the night Ethan Bowers in second. Nate Walker on the bottom in third. Three wide just behind. 
Brandon Barnhart, Blade Wisdom right there was part of that three wide action as well. As we just cross the line for lap number three. First side-by-side -side battle. That's gonna be Sten Roos and Wisdom. Sten Roos in the middle, Wisdom down low. More battling on behind, further back in the pack. We see two and three wide back here. Landon Curran on the inside. Blake Steele trying to make up some ground through the middle. Hunter McManus around the outside. Everywhere we turn, we have battles along this racetrack. Quick check back up front to our race leader. Cody Nevin is still leading the way. Ethan Bowers following him. Nate Walker in third. Brandon Barnhart, Michael Stenroos fourth and fifth. As Stenroos looks underneath Barnhart, out of turn number two. Stenroos almost able to complete that pass. As one car had to pull it down the pit lane, that was Jordan Dye. Looks like he's going to be rejoining the racetrack. Six is going to be Blade Wisdom. Seventh, Ryder English. Eighth, Caleb York. Ashton Farr, ninth. Landon Curran working the bottom in tenth. One car just hit a tire and popped the front end up. A little further back. Now we see drivers bringing that car down low through turn one and two as we have a battle for the lead. Bowers looking underneath Nevin through three and four. There's our top fives kind of settling out just for the moment. And there's a gap back to Ryder English and Blade Wisdom that is side by side. That's sixth and seventh. Ryder English is gonna prevail. Wisdom slots back to seventh. Caleb, oh, your, oh. go ahead. Almost four wide for uh, P15 as uh, Hunter McManus takes over that spot. Like I said, battling all over. Cody McDonald looks like he's going to throw a little bit of a slider on McManus out of turn two. Take that position. McManus looking to repay the paver down here in three and four. This isn't the race lead, folks, but there is battling all over this racetrack currently. These drivers are battling for every spot that they can. Back up front, Nevin has six tenths of a second over Bowers. Walker still in third, Stenroos fourth, Barnhart in fifth. Just scanning around here to see our next battle, it's right behind. Ashton Farr on the outside, Dave and Cannon all the way down by the tires. Caution flag goes in the air. Lane Scruggs had an issue. We're gonna take a look at exactly what happened. That was back there about 16th or 17th. Oh, he entered so low, he hit a tire and went up in front of the other cars spun that car around that had to bring the yellow flag out as the leaders were going to be charging out of turn number two on that lap already halfway through this feature race Looks like one car's getting the wave around. Still have 23 cars on the racetrack. Couple cars heading down to the pit lane. That's Landon Norton and Lane Scruggs. Field gonna go two by two. Looks like Cody Nevin's going to choose the outside line to restart as leader. You do have lane choice here. Nevin and Bowers, row number one. Looks like that start did get waved off. Uh-oh. What? Nate Walker, our 
uh, third place sitter has just, uh, vanished into, uh, the Shadow Realm. Oh, maybe some connection issues for Nate Walker as he's not on the racetrack anymore. That's very unfortunate. Well, do, do I get a repick? Do I get to pick again? Go for it. <laughs> no, as, I'm kidding. As the pace truck is peeling <laughs> off. Maybe not. It looks like we're going to delay the green once more. Maybe they're trying to get one driver back into the lobby here. That might be they're trying to allow Nate Walker time to get back into the server. This is some things you have to deal with when you're racing online is connection issues from time to time. Looks like we went going back to green this time. Uh-oh, Stenroos in the wall pretty hard through one and two, but he's going to remain in third. It doesn't slow him down too much. Nevin clears Bowers. Stenroos looking underneath Bowers, and now Nevin. He slides up out of turn two. Boy, what a big battle we have back here. It was three and four wide out of turn number two, three wide out of four this time. Blake Steele. Okay. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say Blake Steele and others were a part of that three wide action. Bowers, Barnhart, Stenroos trying to make it three wide for second as we got 10 laps to go. Update, Nate Walker did not make it back into the session, unfortunately, so he's credited as 23rd right now. Caution flag goes in the air. I don't see what happened unless it was back maybe around Ashton Farr. Oh yeah, Ashton Farr's car got he got turned into the outside wall just trying to miss the 83 having an issue. Unfortunately, his car ends up with quite a bit of damage. He has to bring it down the pit lane for some repair. As now we're inside of 10 laps to go, we are going to have single file restarts from here out. Well, my driver, I picked him up to fifth. He's up to fifth, started seventh, so Blade Wisdom now inside of the top five. Lights go out on the pace truck this time. Back underway as we cross the line for nine laps to go here at Lima Land. Blake Steele, Ryder English, Blade Wisdom, three wide. That's a battle for fifth, sixth, and seventh on the racetrack. Steele's going to stay committed to the bottom. English and Wisdom up top. Cameron Tucker, Landon Curran, David Cannon battling. That's eighth, ninth, and tenth as we come across the line for seven laps to go. Back up front, Cody Nevin, Ethan Bowers, Michael Stenroos. Your top three. Barnhart, fourth, Wisdom and Steel battling for fifth. David can uh oh, the 96 car gets spun around. That was Ryder English. As he's stopped on the outside of turn number one, that is going to bring the yellow flag out. I think he had some help, though, because the close battling they had into turn number one. Keep an eye on the 96 machine as they work down the front straightaway and into turn number one. The, the oh. eight, yeah, the 53... There, if Cameron Tucker just gives him some help into turn one, Juan Martinez has nowhere to go. He makes contact with Ryder English.
as all the other drivers just try to stay clear of Ryder. The 22 machine makes a little bit of contact with Ryder, but I think he's Ryder's still going to be able to continue. Caleb York with a uh, big trouble under the yellow, got it into the outside wall and tore the right front off, able to fix it. Oh my. Back out on the track. Yeah, you got to be careful. These race tracks, these small dirt tracks, they don't have safer barriers or anything. So you're either going into concrete or sometimes metal guardrail. We are back underway here. Now coming across the line, just four laps remain. Nevin, Bauer, Stendrus, your top three. Steele continuing to try to pick up fifth from Blade Wisdom on the bottom part of the racetrack. Gonna keep an eye up front here in the closing laps. Does Bowers have anything for Nevin? Nevin moves down to the middle. Bowers is going to continue to run right near the wall. Battle for third. Barnhart looking underneath Stenrus. We come across the line. White flag goes in the air. No matter what happens, we are going to finish on this lap. Bowers tried to make a big run into turn one and two. He's just going to settle to run the outside. Nevin's going to run the bottom and let the car slide up. Checkered flag in the air, and Cody Nevin wins at Limeland. Ethan Bowers is going to come home second. Michael Stenroos in third. We will get to have a word with our top three in just a moment. They're going to bring it down the front straightaway here. Maybe celebrate a little, but definitely going to stop here for a picture. Our top three. Perfectly lined up on the front straightaway. Our final results here. Cody Nevin, Ethan Bowers, Michael Stenroos, Brandon Barnhart in fourth, Blade, Blade Wisdom in fifth, Blake Steele in sixth, Landon Curran in seventh, David Cannon eighth, Blake Bailey ninth, Cody McDonald in tenth, Zachary Rogers, 11th. Matt Taylor, 12th. Lane Scruggs, 13th. Landon Norton, 14th. Jaden Rager, 15th. Juan Martinez, 16th. Clayton Cluel in 17th. Ashton Farr in 18th. 19th is going to go to Ryder English. 20th to Hunter McManus. 21st to Cameron Tucker. 22nd to Caleb York. 23rd to Nate Walker. And 24th to Jordan Dye. And right before we bring in our top three, let's talk about our biggest mover and he was a transfer car I think all the way from the C main maybe even potentially the D main but Blake Bailey finished ninth up 12 spot no actually Zachary Rogers was our biggest mover I was almost jumping the gun on that Tim he finished 11th up 13 spots started dead last here in this feature tonight so awesome run for Zachary Rogers just want to give credit to him for being our biggest mover of the night. Well, hey, both of them deserve credit. You know, it, passing 10 cars on in this is extremely difficult. Absolutely, and we had quite a few big movers. Like I said, Zachary Rogers at plus 13, Blake Bailey at plus 12, and Matt Taylor at plus 11. So some really awesome run for those fellas. They finished 9th, 11th, and 12th, respectively. And now, without further ado, let's get a word with our top three. Hey, Michael, it's Tyler and Tim up in the broadcast booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got a copy. All righty, man. Well, you bring that car home in third, up one spot from your starting position in fourth. Did you have anything else for Bowers and Nevin in the closing laps there? No, I was kind of fading that uh, before that first or last restart. 
after that last restart even i was kind of falling back a bit but just trying to follow him and hold my position there yeah absolutely was was tire wear playing a big role i know i mean the track was getting awful slick we could definitely see it slicking off a little bit yeah i was kind of hoping i had a little bit left to run in the middle there but i was i felt like i was pulling away from the guys behind me so yeah absolutely tim you have anything to ask michael yeah, uh, from the driver's perspective, where were you the most comfortable uh, uh, throughout the whole event, uh, that being the feature, and how different was it from uh, the feature to the heats that you were in? Yeah, well, the heats, you know, just pedal the metal all the way around the top and then a uh, feature comes around and the top's tricky to run you don't want to get into the wall so i felt way more comfortable in the middle and other than that you know you just had to be up top a little bit there and then we went back down to the middle at the closing laps absolutely buddy well we appreciate you getting a word in here with us and before we let you go is there anybody that you'd like to thank yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Cody and Evan and uh, the guys in NLRA. They've just been helping me out a lot, so I just appreciate them. All right, Michael. Well, we'll let you go celebrate that third-place finish again. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah, thank you. That was your third-place finisher, Michael Stenrews. Now let's get a word in with Mr. Ethan Bowers. Hey, Ethan, Tyler and Tim up in the booth. You got a copy? Yes, yeah, sir. I got a copy. All right, man. You bring that car home tonight where you started in second. Tell us a little bit about your night, and did you have anything left in the tank for Cody? Uh, I mean, uh, we qualified, uh, I think, six or something like that. And I uh, got a good restart on the uh, heat race, one heat race, and then main event time. And just, I think me and Cody's is dead even so i couldn't really do nothing and i tried to throw a slider didn't have a little bit enough grip to throw it and so we just after i knew that and about lost his position i just said i'm just gonna ride behind him and take home second so you gotta do what you gotta do we'll just even with him and we're going to next week absolutely tim you have anything to ask ethan yeah uh you know i was gonna point that out you were running about even you think you could have made something happen uh elsewhere uh besides the top uh not really uh just we're just dead even if you slick track just black slick all the way across so you, no gripping and we're dead even so i don't think we could i could have passed him so just rode in there in a second all right buddy well before we let you go who would you like to thank uh, Carolina Sin Sports, Blade Remodeling, BNC Detailing, Mianus Grading Company, uh, Cannibal's Trailer Rental Service, Carolina Speed Shop, Wayne and Newman for uh, building an awesome setup. Just did it before he left left his house uh, today, and it felt pretty good. Set, slick set, on dig. Just we're about dead even with Cody, and uh, I want to thank Ashton for uh, photography for taking some awesome pictures, and just everybody at uh, Carolina Sin Sports for all the help and who's your race tire, and you guys for putting it on. Absolutely, man. Well, again, congratulations on your second place finish, and we'll let you go celebrate it. Thank you. That was your second place finisher, Mr. Ethan Bowers. Now let's move on and talk to your race winner, Mr. Cody Nevin. Hey, Cody, Tyler and Tim up in the broadcast booth. You got a copy? Yeah, absolutely. How's it going, boys? It's going fantastic, man. Well, you didn't let that car fall at all from the race lead. You had a really good race. Was you worried at all from Ethan or Michael behind you there? Or did you did you know you had enough to hold him off? I was actually really worried there for a little bit with Ethan behind me. He was better than uh better than I was on the top. Um that's why we went to the middle. Um Top was definitely faster, just the middle's more was more consistent, and I knew that if I could just hit my marks there through the middle, right through the slick, I should have been able to hold him off. I mean, like I said, he was better on the top, so I mean, anything could happen, but I think uh, those couple of yellows at the end kind of saved us a little bit, in a, in a way. Oh, absolutely, man. Well, you had a dominant night tonight. Tim, you have anything to ask Cody? Yeah, I know you didn't have to 
work your way through the main uh the mains, but how much of an advantage was it to start on the point? Oh god, any any time that you start up front it's just it's it's night and day difference. You don't have you have the clean air out front, you don't have to deal with dirty air unless you really get in the deep lap traffic. Um I'll take starting out front any day of the week, <laughs> to be honest with you guys. I mean you but I mean you see it, you put yourself anywhere mid pack back, it's the the chances of you getting out of there alive are pretty slim, and it's, that's not a shot at any drivers or anything like that. That's just racing. I mean, the racing on the build that we have now is so close and competitive. It's it's uh is it's really hard to come through the field now. Um, a couple of builds ago, you could do it, and you can still do it, but everything has to go your way. So yeah, I'll take starting on the point any day of the week. All righty, man. Well, before we let you go, who would you like to thank? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm like I said, like last week, I got to thank you guys up in the broadcast booth. Appreciate you guys putting on that. Um, I went back and watched the Cedar Lake race from last week. That was really good. You guys do a good job. So thank you guys for that. Uh, I got to thank the boys putting on the league, giving us a place to run. Um, so thank you guys for that. Good admitting tonight as well. Um, so thank you guys. To, shout out to both of you guys. Um, yeah, first and foremost, I got to shout out Fubar Cannabis. Uh, Fubar, he's a long time a uh, buddy of mine, he's got a cannabis company, so if you're into that, go ahead and check them out. Um, NLRA, Nick Linnett Racing Association. I've uh, been friends with Nick for a long time. He's the man. He's got to give a big shout out to him. All the boys back at NLRA. Uh, Speed Ranch e set up. has got to thank Caden Honeycutt, Tanner Tomasi, Stephen Gaines over there. Uh, D. Keefe Speed, Damian Kiefer. Big shout out to him. He's always been a really good guy. Raced with him for years. Uh, Spy Glassware, Masturbator's best bear baiting company in all of the Midwest. If you guys are into bear baiting or bear hunting, go and check them out. Uh, DRC, MB Customs Race Cars, CNF Track Prep, Ultimate Dirt TV, Brett Wheeler and the gang over there, Acme Tools, XR Northern Storm, YSOD Auto Racing, Structural Buildings. Um, once again, just a big shout out to you guys. I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting some sponsors, but yeah, and uh, shout out to Michael uh, Senrius for running third tonight. Uh, he's a teammate of mine. He's a good guy. All right, man. Well, congratulations on the victory here tonight at Limeland. We'll let you celebrate your back to back wins. Yeah, I have a couple more bush lights tonight. I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Take care. You too, guys. Thanks. That was your race winner, Cody Nevin. All right. Well, as we wrap up here tonight from Limeland Motorsports Park with the Short Track Rivals Racing Open Setup Pro Late Models. Man, what an awesome event here tonight. Lime Milan has put on some really good shows for us on the network. If you were tuning in with us for the first time or you've been watching along with us each and every night, we certainly appreciate it. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button, button for us if you haven't already. Tim, do you have any closing thoughts tonight? Well, just an amazing, amazing show that these guys put on every every you know, race they they have. Just awesome. Absolutely, buddy. And for us here on the Buckeye Racing Network, upcoming schedule, we are off tomorrow night and Saturday night, but there, we will have some live racing for you again on Sunday night at just shortly after 9 o'clock Eastern time. We have the League of Outlaws IMCA style stock cars. It's their championship night, so if you're Want to check out some stock car racing action? It'll be right here on the Buckeye Racing Network. And, of course, next week on Tuesday and Thursday night, we'll have STRR's events in the 358 Modifieds and the Pro Late Models. Again, appreciate everybody tuning in tonight. So long from Limeland.